you have given me far more of your time than I ever anticipated or expected. I, it has been I, my pleasure. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you have other things, you if there's anything you want to add, this is your opportunity, but I'm, I'm, I'm on cloud nine that you have had this time with you, and I, I hope there's I think there are others that want to hear some of what you have to say. And I know you've been on other talk shows and stuff, but I think we covered some things that maybe haven't, what, if either right. they bear repeating or they haven't gotten out there yet. Mm -hmm. um, how do you how do you identify as a dissident? I mean, you just got through saying you're speaking as an orthodox doctor, but you're on the board of Rethinking AIDS, and do you get flack? From, I mean, now we can turn off the camera no, if you no, want no, to. No, 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 no. But do well, you, you know, you know are you are you really a dissident, or are you a, uh, are you a sheep in wolf's clothing, or well, no, wolf in let, sheep's clothing? Let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. Let's take a doctor who states publicly. when confronting an HIV patient. I'm not a drug dealer. I will try not to give you drugs as long as I can. If I have to give you drugs, it's a personal defeat. Or talking to somebody who the doctor is realizing wants to quit or to reduce drugs and telling this person, look, we will reduce or quit the drugs, but I am the one who will quit your drugs or will reduce your drugs. Agree? Because if we agree, then I will be doing this. How do you classify this doctor? Well, not as orthodox. Yeah. These are the doctors who work in the infectious disease department. So they don't classify themselves dissident. They probably don't even know that there is a dissident movement because uh, in Europe the situation mm -hmm. is so much different that there is no need to be dissident. So th when I first heard this doctor stating these words, I said, well, what am I doing here? You are far more dissident than I am. <laughs> and then uh, I asked this doctor, do you know that if both of us were stating this in front of an HIV patient and we were in the United States, both of us would have been fired or maybe cancelled this from the medical yeah. world? And the doctor said, well, I know, but we are not in the United States. <laughs> hey, doctor, I'm, I'm, I came to AIDS distance a few years ago because I quit the drugs in, in 2003 for the second time. Not, I didn't know about dissidents. I mean, I I did all this before I discovered. It. But I, the messages I hear in a in the in the most vocal part of the AIDS dissident community is, don't get don't get your T cells count tested. Don't ignore. Don't go to doctors. Don't. It's almost like it seems like a stick your head in the sand reaction. That if you if you close your eyes and cover them up, everything will be okay. And it seems. It seems really misguided to me, and I understand the argument that if you fixate on these tests and you get too focused, you can get you can make yourself. We both know this that, that you can make yourself sick fixating on these things. There has to to me there has to be some kind of middle ground. Yes. But too many people I see people come into the dissident forum saying, "I tested positive. What do I do?" And they say, "Ignore." Ignore it. Don't ever go to a doctor. Don't ever get tested again. I I, I find that thinking. Um, I'm I'm I've been criticized and unfriended and disowned by a lot of dissidents because I chose to go back on the drugs. I chose my numbers got to the point I didn't want to take the I didn't want to play those risks. And and it's like there's no room for. You're not allowed to be sick. You're not allowed to, um, you know, they're, they're, the argument is that CD4 counts very wildly. I don't disagree with that, that what they call low is, you know, what, 350? To me, low is single and double digits, you know, or a long-term decline without any, you know. So I don't, I, I, I I'm, I'm find myself in this no man's land of, rejecting orthodox medicine because it just about killed me 
but the dissidents, I don't want to say, I don't want to paint, I don't want to call them all. The most vocal component of the dissident movement seems also irrational and irresponsible. Well, you cannot reject medicine as a whole. And sometimes, uh, you know, this happens also, for example, in cancer patients. This is not unique to AIDS. Uh, chemotherapy has a lot of uh, dreadful side effects. And it is effective only in a minor percentage of cancers. But I think uh, it would be a gross mistake to uh, avoid or to uh, reject chemotherapy as a whole or to reject uh, cancer medicine as a whole. Uh, the, the dissidency was born in the United States, not in Europe, because the attitude somehow in the United States was different on both parts. In Europe, there is no need to be dissident because common sense is accepted. <coughs> As I told you, in the infectious disease department, if the patient says, doctor, I don't want to take the drugs, the doctor tries to explain, but respects the decision of the patient and will cure the patient just the same. And if at some point in time the, pa the patient says, I think uh, I want to take the drugs, the doctor does not scold him, does not. So there is a very high respect of the patient decision. Uh, if you are not on uh, antiretroviral drugs, uh, they will operate you just the same. They will do whatever. You are not out of the system because your decision is respected. Not only with HIV or AIDS, all diseases. Uh, with the minors uh, is different. This is a different story, but let's not talk about this. And so, uh, doctors, uh, most doctors in Europe, they don't feel they have to be dissident for the very simple reason that uh, they work according to their common sense. And according to their common sense, uh, there is no need, for example, to give uh, drugs as a pre-exposure, post-exposure prophylaxis or like this. Most doctors, they just work uh, according to their common sense. Guidelines are not so strict and therefore the dissident movement was born in the United States for a reason. Because here things are very radicalized. Well, this was where AIDS was named and defined and, you know, I guess, discovered. So, and we do have a, uh, a funny way of doing business in this country, <laughs> to put it mildly. But going and back medicine is, med our medicine, our, our medical care is, uh, is a train wreck. So, you, those but, are me my words. I'm not talking, I'm not putting words in your mouth. You don't have to say anything. But uh, let me just make a public recommendation so that uh, I'm not uh, misunderstood. Please. You have to use common sense. Any drug is not the product of the devil. And even if it was the product of the day, but it is useful to keep me alive in a given moment of my life, I would use it. Therefore, if at some point in time some chemical molecule will be helpful without discussing whether the virus exists, what do antibody tests detect, but that drug, maybe simply because it is a powerful antibiotic, it's helpful in controlling my disease, I would use it. It's not a matter of being distant or orthodox. It's a matter of having good common sense. Now, let's make some names. Dr. Klaus Kernlein is a, a member of the Thinking Gates, is a doctor in a Kiel in Germany. He has many HIV positive patients and he tries not to use antiretroviral drugs as long as he can, just like the doctors who are not known by anybody, anonymous doctors at the infectious disease departments in Italy. But Dr. Kenlein, if it is necessary, 
he uses antiretroviral drugs. We know shame. We are not talking about religion. We are not talking about political faith or like a sports faith. We are talking about medicine. Medicine is not religion. There should be no dogmas in either side. And so, correct me, but they're not talking about you have to take this the rest of your life either, are they? As a rule? No. Uh, you know? You just it, monitor. You just monitor. You just monitor and see what happens. Things, things are out of control. We need to do something. And this is what I suggest for now. You know? And uh, so when you are talking about medicine, you should not have the approach of a religious or a political faith that you never have to be a traitor of that faith. This applies to other fields of human knowledge, not to medicine. Uh, so, as a doctor, I would uh, recommend everybody not to reject medicine. And it is impossible that you do not find a doctor who is on the same wavelength as yours. Maybe you have to travel all over the world, but I tell you that there are doctors and I know that. I know that. I've had them. I seek them out. Okay. And I, I in fact, I even differentiate and I refer to them as healers. <laughs> I, I look for healers, not just doctors. So, so my recommendation yeah. is do not reject medicine as a whole. This is a terrible mistake that will lead you to the grave. Find a doctor who is on the same wavelength as yours. And I tell you, there are very many, many more that you can imagine. So be patient, find them, it's not easy, but... I think it is more difficult in the United States than it is in other countries, but I don't know that. I've not been to other countries, so that's a, that may be a bias on my part, but they are there. Let's say we go eat dinner and talk about all the things we can't talk about on camera. Okay. <laughs> That's fine for me. <laughs>